Well, hey, everyone. I haven't shown you ID in a long time, and it was a fabulous day for me today in markets and calls and how the day went. So I thought I'd bring her on. Remember when she was just that little girl? <laughs> she has grown. She is the most loving thing, and she's about full grown. She's about a year and a half. She's a rag doll, in case any of you wonder what kind of cat this is. They are just loving as can be. Say hello, Ivy. Wish everybody happy holidays. Okay. As I said, I am just beyond happy. And this is your financial market wrap-up. And this wrap-up is for the evening. As we're here on Wednesday, the 13th of December, a watershed event for 2023. What do I mean by that? Watershed events were where an event takes place and something big happens. The Fed has declared an end to their rate tightening and their restrictive policy. That doesn't mean they're taking it all off tonight, but it means that we are at the point where, as the Fed said, it is highly unlikely we will need to raise interest rates again. And if you look at the dot plot, five members are already calling for a number of rate cuts in 2024. They're conservative. The market will move up when the rate cuts come. May, super much. March is still very much in play, but by May, be careful. That, that's probably when they begin, assuming that inflation continues to break down. Remember, every month we have rising inflation. The degree is how much it's rising. It's not at 6%. It's not at 5 4 You're in the 4 for the core. You're in the 3s for the headline. And the game is how do you bring it down? The goal is 2%, not negative, 2%. So you're always dealing with that. So what the Fed basically did is call the game over on the rate tightening. It has major ramifications. You're at all-time highs in the Dow. You're basically over 37,000. You've taken all of the other indices up. Though There's a point here where they're getting ahead of themselves. But the first reaction is, oh, my God, and you get the Johnny come lately to come in, and then you get a correction and whatever. Do you remember when I put out the September report on the S&P, and I said, October will be the worst month. November will be one of the best months. We'll then consolidate right into the beginning of December. And obviously, for me, the beginning is how do I know what the FOMC meeting is going to produce? So for me, it was to that point. Now, from here, I don't care what happens. I still predict that the end of December will get another bounce. Between now and then, it could be anything, including profit taking, all kinds of craziness going back and forth. You'll notice that because the Fed said cuts, talking, they're discussing them. Dollar plunges 100 points, other currencies getting a bounce. Now, you are up sharply in the euro today, but we have four central banks tomorrow giving us their rate policy, and I make you this prediction. Right now, those bankers are going, now what do we do? The U.S. is now turning the other way, all right? It's finally here. We knew it was coming sooner or later, but it's here. How aggressive do we get in cutting our rates? We're already weaker than they are as an economy. Our employment's not been as strong as the U.S. has been. How aggressive do we get now in becoming supportive to the economy? In other words, it's over for a number of the U.S. central banks with restrictive policy and recognize it. You'll wobble. You always do. You get tested. You always do. But the game has changed. Okay? That's simple. So, when I look at the S&P, you're up nearly 2.5% at midweek. It's pretty exciting. When we look at the market, you certainly did consolidate. This is December. And you went in and you started coming out, yes, just before this, uh, starting Friday, you began lifting up a little. And today, the accelerator pedal. But nobody knew what was the Fed was going to say. And I don't know an analyst that thought the Fed would be this dovish. Not the members. The Fed chair, whoa, big surprise. Lower low, higher high, accelerator on and the market running. Notice how you have stayed over the 18-day average. Remember what I teach you about bias in my charting courses. When you're over a key average, you decide which one works for you. I use the 18-day average. That keeps me from thinking, don't even think the short side. You're only thinking the long side of the market. 
Sometimes you don't get the pattern you want of higher lows, higher highs, but other times you will get something in here that's called an embedded reading, which we had. We then lost it. We had the correction back to the 18-day average right at the beginning of December. That held and the market came back and it's re-embedded again. How do you trade off a re-embedded? Let me teach you. How do I teach you? I want you to move your cursor up here. It'll take you with an icon right into my charting course area. That's where you want to go. At the end of this, I've created a video. Please, please treat yourself. It's Christmas and learn. It is not Bollinger Bands the way that you're used to them. It is with mine and it is with the way that I modify and teach the slow stochastic. Very, very important. Do you have to do it? Of course not. I'd prefer you don't, and I prefer you're buying up there. I want you to buy up there, okay? Because only 5% of the time does the market stay over or under a Bollinger Band. You play for that time. You're going to build the new casino in Vegas because you got it. I'm sure you do. Um, NASDAQ, not that way. Overbought market, a couple of days over the Bollinger Band. How, how often do you stay over the Bollinger Band in a row max, typically? It's in the course. Uh, the micro E-mini Dow, up to the resistance. This is the powerful one. Have I not been here for you for two weeks saying, if you're going to buy any currents, any of the stock indices, you buy the Dow. It's the strongest of the whole group. All-time highs, all-time high close, come on. And is there going to be the rotation into the Russell? Well, you're up to the upper Bollinger Band and you are embedding. And there's more. There's a lot more. Look at the 18-day average. It's now over. Just happened. The 200 and the 100. It just happened. If I, if I come back with you, let's go to Monday. Let's go to Monday. This Monday. You were under the 100, under the 2. Yesterday, you start nudging it, okay? Today, you get over the 100, but you're still over the 200. And tonight, voila, you're over all three. I was telling you I thought that would happen. And what happens when that occurs? Because it's a crossover and so many people follow moving averages, you normally get a thrust with it. You've already gone up and made the higher high. It's met its one of its obligations. There's more, but I'm not going to show them to you here. They're in the enhanced course. In the 10-year note, you're over the upper Bollinger Band and you're not embedded. Uh, this is where I think the pros take money off the table. And I know, again, you're going to say that, Ira, you are so wrong. This is going to run. You, you have no idea what you're talking about. And you're right. I don't. Okay, I'm lucky to be here. Higher high, lower low, and overbought for the five year. You can run the Bollinger Band for a while, but be careful right here. In the dollar, look at how you just came under everything. So this market had been fighting a battle, and I think you'd agree with me, going right up to this 100-day average and falling back to the 18 in an overbought situation that wasn't trending. You had a lower low, higher high, and then you had the higher lows, higher high, and you're still in place as of yesterday. Today, with the drop under this, you no longer have a trend. Now you got a higher high, lower and low, and the market had been running at a key moving average that it was having great trouble getting over. 100-day average is like six-month moving average, if you think about it. I mean, pretty powerful stuff. Now, tomorrow, I don't know. You, you got four banks going to make statements. Why do I want to step in front of that and worry the reactions to it? That would be my thought as an educated person doing this, having traded in the currency since the first, literally the first week or two that they began trading on the what they called the IMF, International Monetary Futures, I think it was. or Yeah, I think that's what they called it. And it became the CME groups, okay? And then that went away. And I, yes, I had a seat on that exchange too. I, I traded that. Looking at how this works right here. No, you, you step away. Central bank meetings can do what happened with us. You don't know what's coming out of them. And the markets react in ways you don't know. You stand on that track with that bullet train, and I'll be reading about you in the paper. You're either going to be the daredevil does it again, or we have another person we have to bury. 
Um, lower lows, higher highs in the pound. They're meeting the marrow. I want no part of that. All right, Bitcoin's back to bullish, but it is in an overbought area. Overbought keeps me away. Over, if, for me to like to tell my clientele to do something, everything has to fit into, a, into, into the groove. How's that? There is no perfect trade. It doesn't exist. But when things are outliers, you stay away from them. An outlier being you're overbought and you got a buy signal. That's okay. Let somebody else trade it. Now, if the dollar falls hard, why would Brent or any of these markets perform? They had a bounce today. Well, I'll be a son of a gun. But that's all it is, is a bounce. Why did it bounce? Because oil's priced in US dollars. They got cheaper. Number two, apparently, the Fed is saying the U.S. economy, it's time to stop fighting it and let it grow again. So they think inflation, apparently, I want to use that word so carefully, apparently there's enough of a lag still in the market that it'll gradually keep slipping. And they're in the balancing act of how many rate cuts, if and when do those cuts begin that they can start feeding the economy to stop it from rolling down? Recession? There is no recession. Goldilocks? Absolutely. She's alive and doing well. How long? I don't know. Will the Fed get overly aggressive? The marketplace thinks so. Don't fall into that trap. Please don't fall into that trap. If you fall into what the market thinks, you just with the herd doesn't mean they're right. They'll price in, and right now, they're going to price in five rate cuts. You watch. Smarter money's looking at two or three. Less conservative, five or four. I don't know. We'll see. They're data dependent. Why do you have to guess from now to next December? I, I never understand it. Each month, take it at a, at a time. But the important part is it's not going up. Ah, that fits into your theory. You'd have to get a shocker on CPI to get the Fed to say they're going up. They haven't committed to the breaks yet. So if they had to go up, they don't fall into the Volcker trap where they cut and then they got to go higher. They're not there. You don't want to fall into some of the other traps, though, that were there in Burns and some of the other people. Uh, again, I have experience with it. I've been through it. Lower highs, lower lows embedded. I am definitely in the bear camp. I am in the bear camp in WTI crude. Take the course. You will understand. Heating oil, I am in the bear camp. Take the course. Are we going to get a bearish crossover? You're knocking on the door right through here. And look at what the embedded reading did. Look what it did. Kaboom. So you put this all together, you try to come up with game plans. I try to teach you here, give you my words of wisdom at the beginning, and we'll see where that carries you. I'm Ira, you have yourself a great evening, and I will see you all in the morning.